Hi guys, and welcome back to More Than Cars. And good morning, and welcome from Venice. Right, first of all, let's get this out of the way. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do so. And click that bell notification. It's only thanks to you that this channel is starting to gain a little bit of attraction. And what is quite uh, exciting, considering obviously Project 2. Now, I've been Oddly enough, a lot of people have commented what Project 2 is. If you don't know what Project 2, please go to the channel page. Very first video does kind of explain what Project 2 is, but effectively it's a car meetup uh, venue based in uh, the Midlands in England. And it's not active yet, but soon, um, well, by the, well, before the end of the year, we are definitely going to have some form of event there, basically saying thank you to the NHS, hopefully when we're a little bit more out of COVID. So, yeah, subscribe to the channel. Well, I'll show you update pro process on Project 2, but the kind of overall community that this channel is building is for that site. Anyway, what am I doing in Venice? Well, unfortunately, we actually had a, not a holiday, because it is all business, all business all the time, but we actually were um, going to go back to Mallorca, actually, where we'd, um, you've seen plenty of times before. However, obviously, the um, restrictions in the UK meant you would have had to quarantine for two weeks. I cannot afford to stay at home for two weeks without working. Oddly enough, actually, COVID has taught me anything. I can actually work from home, but that's not the point. Um, so basically we needed to find somewhere to go to meet up that um, wasn't basically needing quarantine and hence we're in Venice look at this and I'm in a rather nice hotel um, actually where George, George Clooney had part of his honeymoon what is Clay, I'm going to say claim to fame, we're not in his room, his room is down there and it's significantly more money than mine but anyway on um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just excited. It's very early in the morning. We're an hour ahead. It's very early in the morning. I'm not even sure if the wife has got out of bed yet. But anyway, look at this fantastic view. And I kind of want to touch on a few things. So first of all, thank you very much for those of you un who understand why the SV and the Pista are going. So what do I need to enable them to actually go? Well, most of you will probably realize that Dean, not part of Redline anymore, Dean DMB Collections is going to sell them on a SOAR agreement. That means sale or return. So he doesn't have to buy them off me, but that does mean they're not actually sold until somebody actually buys them, if that makes sense, because sometimes you can sell them straight to a dealership. I've inquired um, and frankly, it's quite disgusting the amount of offers that they would actually, or low ball offers that, um, well, Grey Paul or anyone else who will actually offer you on the Ferrari. Actually, I haven't had a response from Lamborghini yet, but I'm in no particular rush to sell them. I am going to market them at a um, price that meant they will, or mean that they will sell very quickly, meaning they'll probably be one of the cheapest of the two cars on the market. I appreciate I'm taking a little bit of a hit, but in my head, I'm clearing the finance, I'm clearing anything. I actually do get enough money back to put the deposits on the other cars. So actually, the new cars aren't going to cost me anything. Bit of man maths there, but that logic is kind of sound, especially in the world of COVID and things. I don't want to load up more on finance. I've got so much to spend and do to make Project 2 what I want it to be. Um, I think most of you get that. I really hope you do. I'm really sorry that if I'm selling your favourite car, trust me, the ones coming in will become your new favourite car. They are aimed at the kind of things that I like to do um, with the cars. And don't get me wrong, once Project 2 is going, a new lot of visiting, a new lot of spending that money on coffees and buying sandwiches and all of the rest, kind of my car collection will start changing. It'll start evolving into ones that I'm gonna buy to keep that will be stored at Project 2 as part of the attraction and all of that. that. That's a good year away before we start doing that. So it doesn't make sense to cling on to these cars for the impending year, I can always buy the things back. I can find a better one, a lower mileage one, um, to buy back into the collection. The Pista and the SV are not going to appreciate in the next year with COVID. So hang fire, I hope you appreciate it. It does kind of make financial sense. Obviously, we are potentially going to buy a helicopter. That is to aid the business, me traveling up and down the country. There is a bit of logic in this. At the end of the day, this is not a hobby anymore. By no stretch of the means, YouTube and Project 2 is nowhere near a hobby. It is a proper business, but the one that is actually providing most of my income that is frankly affording a good proportion of these cars, I have to push, I have to pursue. Um, and obviously this year with COVID, we've not grown. The business has not grown. We've done very well. I'm not complaining. There's far people, there's probably 90% of the world that has done far worse than I have during COVID, apart from the likes of Amazon and all of those ones that have managed to uh, 
um, categorize? I oh, know, you know what I'm saying. Um, capitalize, there we go. I knew it was being with C. English is definitely not my forte, but capitalize on that, um, on the COVID situation. But yeah, we've not grown. I need to push it. I need to be closer to London, but whilst maintaining contact and actually visits three times a week at Project Two. Now, I don't get me wrong, like somebody suggested, well, why don't you just buy an E Class Mercedes and fire up and down the motorway? It's not the money. It is not. I would quite happily drive the DBS up and down the country, put 100,000 miles on it in a year. That car is staying for the next two, three years. It's not that, it's time. It's the time element. Traveling over an hour a day, so that's two hours a day, doesn't make sense. Doing a short flight, what is only half an hour, or probably it'll end up being 40 minutes there and back each day, makes sense. That extra hour I can spend doing something more productive with my time. So hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, let's turn this camera around. Let's show you Venice and actually show you the room because a lot of you are kind of getting into this channel. This is more than just the cars. This is showing you, uh, I don't want to say lifestyle. This isn't really lifestyle, is it? It's just showing you what I get up to every single day to uh, A, make some money, uh, B, and enjoy the vehicles and kind of the bits and bobs that I've spent last year, 15 or 15 odd years accumulating into different aspects of project two, business, et cetera, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, I'll shut up and show you the view because honestly, it's lovely and it is already blisteringly hot. What, as most of you will realize now, fat Englishman, that doesn't go down too well, but it is nice and windy, so I'm still fairly cool. Okay then, looking at the view, I will do a little bit of explanation. Now, obviously everybody can uh, recognize the square. If I zoom in on that, excuse the wobbly hat camera, I am holding it, where's the domes? Uh, not that way, that way. So there is the main square of Venice. That is actually on another island, if that makes sense. We're actually on an island where we are at the moment. There's, um, I can't remember the name of that one, but uh, you recognize it and you'll have to excuse me. I'm absolutely terrible at names and locations, but we're on the island. That's the main part of Venice over there. And um, well, I'm just about to actually probably go down there for breakfast. Um, this is how it, I find Venice really quite amusing because obviously if you think about it, it's all on water. So this, the water side, is actually the front of the hotel. So we arrived yesterday from the airport, we came along here, pulled up here and then walked into the hotel um, through that thing. Very, very nice hotel, really friendly. Um, they are saying that quite clearly they are uh, not upset, but it's it's um, not busy. But everywhere here seems really quiet. I've been to Venice. Venice, this is probably my fourth time I would have said. And honestly, it feels like a ghost town in certain situations. And even the hotel definitely is not full. It's uh, reasonably full, but as you can see from down there, there's only about four different people having breakfast. So anyway, that's another island over there. And um, I just love it. It's, it's really quite, um, it's, it's out of this world by the fact that we're not used to uh, being around water and boats and things like that so much. So, oh, there's a go. That is the suite that George Clooney stayed in for part of his, um, uh, honeymoon. Uh, and to give you uh, an inkling of the price, that is uh, well over three times the amount we're paying per night. Uh, and it is one, two, three, uh, five figures a night. <laughs> well, I don't quite understand why I had to count that. Anyway, let's uh, open the door, go into the suite and have a little look around. And I will say I banged my head twice already on this. But um, and I'll sort the old camera out to make sure that you can actually see because it's quite dark in here. So a little down into the well, office actually, where I've already spent the morning on my laptop um, because actually something went wrong at work. So just because I'm out of the country does not mean I don't pick up my emails and actually fix things hundreds and hundreds of miles away. I don't mind pointing at the desk. Look, it's a desk and a cable. Um, TV, we'll say not the modernist things, but um, yeah, excuse the uh, rough bed there, but um, a chaise long where I uh, lounge. Let no, I'm joking, I really didn't. <laughs> but yeah, we've got another little balcony here, obviously exactly the same view as you've just seen from the uh, terrace, what is obviously significantly uh, nicer up there. Uh, I poked my head out there. Um, and let's come around a little bit more. So uh, some of my terrible t-shirts. Oh, look at those. That'll uh, irate some of my uh, viewers that don't seem to like my uh, sense of style. I just like being a little bit out there. Same with the cars. <laughs> just, just nice. They're nice. Nice to be different. If you're all the same, you get a bit boring, don't you? So, uh, got a nice little bit. We, we actually said it was part of our, uh, I don't know, my wife's got a thing of basically saying that it's our uh, anniversary or something. And um, I think they would have given it you anyway, but a little champagne, champagne to uh, 
uh, welcome you in, but obviously the sitting room part of the room is, this is actually the width of the hotel as well. So it is surprisingly thin, but it's kind of an L shape, if that makes sense. And you saw the like other proportion. And be actually behind this building here, if the camera focuses on the building, there's actually a swimming pool. And this is the only hotel in Venice with a swimming pool. So another little um, terrace thing. And actually we've got a terrace this side that looks over the back of the hotel as well. Um, and actually a little kid's pool down there and uh, tennis court not that anybody is playing tennis today a really really pretty hotel and it is quite funky that you actually throughout the entire place you've got original artwork and i'm not overly into art and excuse anybody that is i couldn't tell you what this is or when it is but it is completely hand-painted original artwork the lady was quite um or basically telling us about it when we came into the suite and i'm i'm not going to say I don't appreciate art, but I don't necessarily get it. So apologies if uh, if you do. But throughout, basically, what I'm trying to say, throughout the entire hotel, it's covered, absolutely covered in beautiful art, really old bits of furniture. Um, it's, it's stunning, actually. It's really, really pretty. Um, not necessarily my style. It's quite an old-fashioned kind of style, you know, with things like this. But it's really, it's really cool. Clearly, hundreds of years old because you can even see. By the way, it's all kind of put together, but um, yeah, it's, it's quite impressive, actually. Um, going back through here, yeah, really nice, and it's a decent aircon as well. What is a <laughs> thumbs up from me? But um, yeah, let's go back outside and wrap this up. But yeah, what I mean, look at that. I mean, that is one hell of a kind of set of rooms, and we're obviously in the eaves of the hotel, but you can tell by the pitch of it. But um, obviously, this room is uh, most famous for the actual terrace. Probably should have said actually, it's called the Cipriani Hotel. I don't actually think I mentioned that in the front of the thing. I do like to try and give you as much information as possible, but you know, names of places like the domes and things, I didn't do very well in history or anything like that at school. And um, well, a little more nugget of information about myself. Brain is very good at remembering facts, figures that I need to know. So things like for work or, you know, really obscure things that you'd never think you'd remember. I managed to remember them perfectly fine, but things, I don't want to say use, useless information because clearly it's not useless information, but information that doesn't, um, isn't required by myself every single day or, you know, to do with work or whatever I'm interested in. You can tell me 50 times and I still won't remember it. And, you know, the names of these places is one of them. And don't get me wrong, we're actually going to go for a little wander um, this morning. Well, it's, I'm going to say vaguely cool, but, but it's not. It's boiling hot already um, to actually visit some of these sites because, uh, well, it's always nice to catch up on a little bit of history. And actually, with COVID and that, it's just nice to be outside of England. And actually, they're quite restrictive here. So every time you come out your room, you've got to put your mask on. What's well, a good thing? I'm not, don't twist my words, I'm not complaining. It's a good thing, but far more restrictive than the UK. It's a shame the UK isn't quite up there because I, I, I'm fearful. I do not want another wave to happen. So please be safe, please be sensible. Um, we want to appreciate things like this and you know, everybody wants to get away. But anyway, that's a bit of waffle for this morning. So in summary, welcome to Venice. I'll do another one possibly, might even film some stuff around Venice today. I'm not quite sure if you'd be interested in that or not, but uh, I might do. Um, I'm glad you understand about the SV in the Pista. Um, and oh, more sensibly, obviously to get those ready to be sold, the Pista is going to be de-wrapped within the next probably week or week and a half. Now, I'm not sure if anybody watches my channel who is serious enough that they were considering the Pista, but a lot of people liked the purple. If you are genuinely interested in that car and would like the purple still on it, please drop me a DM on Instagram because well, it's going to be de-wrapped and put back to, I'm going to say classy, because the proper red, uh, red, blue and white stripe on it, um, it d did look lovely, actually. It really did look very, very nice, but obviously it wasn't my cup of tea. And obviously, to make it more sellable, is that a word? Um, yeah, the wrap is going to come back. If you are genuinely interested in either one of those cars, please drop me or Dean, DMB Collection, 
uh, an email or a WhatsApp or an Instagram message or however you wish to get in touch because obviously those cars are officially up for sale. Anyway, on that note, thank you ever so much for watching. I really, really hope you're enjoying this travel. And I know some of you haven't quite got it and I appreciate this is daily content. So not every video is gonna be overly interesting, but I try and keep it lively and I try and keep it real. That is the point of the More Than Cars channel is to build this community around real people that just love motor vehicles. I'm gonna say helicopters then as well, but yeah, anything basically with an engine, it's to build this community up for project two. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Really do Kate, take care. Hope everybody's safe and well and all of the rest. And uh, I'll see you again tomorrow for another silly video. Bye guys. Take care.